is going to be about the thermodynamics and kinetics of E1 elimination reactions. What is an E1 reaction? So the E stands for elimination and one stands for unimolecular, uni as in one. Now what is elimination? Well, elimination is any class of organic chemical reaction in which a pair of atoms or groups of atoms are removed from a molecule, usually through the action of acids, bases, or metals, and in some cases by heating it up to a high enough temperature. Unimolecular is a reaction, mechanism step, or any other process which involves only one molecule. As I said before, uni from unimole unimolecular means one. Here is an example of an E1 reaction that we are going to be taking a look at for the continuation of this presentation. Here, on our reactant side, we have 1-methylcyclopropanol, which turns into our products of 1-methylcyclopropene, which is commonly used in agriculture, and water. Here are our compound names. And here are our standard thermodynamic values. Now, if we take a look at our enthalpy, or delta H value, which is the amount of heat content released or used in a system at a constant pressure, we can see that the value is negative. From this, we can infer that the reaction releases thermal energy into its atmosphere, because energy can either be created nor destroyed. This would make a reaction exothermic. Now, the entropy, delta S, or the degree of disorder and randomness in a system, is a positive value. It's 158.9. This means that there is an increase in disorder or an increase in entropy. Our Gibbs free energy, or the maximum amount of work that can be done in a closed system, our delta G reaction value, is negative, negative 239.5 kilojoules per mole to be exact. Now, from this, we can infer that the reaction is spontaneous and exergonic. So, our reaction is exothermic, there is an increase in entropy, it is a spontaneous reaction, and it is exergonic. Now here is our potential energy diagram and rate law to help us visualize this reaction. So because there is only one step, um, our reactants become our rate determining step because it is the only step. If you recall, C4H8O is our 1-methylcyclopropanol. Now let's take a closer look at what's happening here in this transition state, which results in our products of C4H6 and H2O, or 1-methylcyclopropene and water, in our reaction mechanism. So, as we can see here in our reaction mechanism, we are doing an elimination of an alcohol. Now, to do an, an elimination or an E1 reaction of an alcohol, we need to use either H2SO4, H3PO4, or TSOH as our catalyst. Now here we chose to use H2SO4 or sulfuric acid. Now we formed a carbon to carbon pi bond and broke a carbon to hydroxide and carbon to hydrogen bond. We also formed a hydrogen to oxygen bond in that the molecule of water that forms is a byproduct. We can't see this molecule of water here, but we'll take a look at it later. This is the pattern of an elimination reaction. Instead of attacking the carbocation to form a new substitution product, a base removed a proton adjacent to the carbocation and formed the, al the alkene. Now, as a, just a quick reminder, a carbocation is an ion with a positively charged carbon atom. Here I have a little visual aid for you to help you visualize the reaction. Let's take a look. As we begin the E1 elimination reaction of 1-methylcyclopropanol, we can trigger the reaction by heating it up. Here comes the fire. Oh no! The O and the H are separating, leaving us with a double bond. Is that water? Yes, it is. We're left with methyl cyclopropene and water. Thank you for watching. I hope that helps visualize our reaction over here. Let's take a look at the next slide if it wants to. There we go. Now we're going to take a look at the factors that affect the rate of an E1 reaction. The three major factors that affect the rate of an E1 reaction are the stability of the carbocation, the solvent type, and the nature of the leaving group. 
let's take a look at the stability of the carbocation. The stability of the carbocation, an E1 elimination reaction, requires the leaving group to take a shared electron resulting in a carbocation. The more stable the carbocation is, the easier it is to form, and the faster the E1 reaction will be. Because of this, there is an observed order of stability resulting from changes in the number of bonds, lone pairs, and carbon atoms. Once again, a reminder, a carbocation is just an ion with a positively charged carbon atom. As we can see here, we can take a look at the um, stability. We can see that tertiary is more stable than secondary, which is more stable than primary, which is more stable than methyl bonds. Now here I have an example of each of them. Here is tertiary, and right down here is primary. The strongest and the weakest is over here, our methyl. The next factor, if you will recall, is the effect of the solvent. So, polar protic solvents have a high dielectric constant and high dipole moments. These help stabilize the carbocation. As a result, the solvent, good ionizing solvents, polar protic, favor the E1 mechanism by stabilizing the carbocation intermediate. As we can see here, we have a few examples of polar protic solvents. Here are some factors affecting the rate of an E1 elimination reaction. So the last one, the last slide, the last uh, factor, the nature of the leaving group. Leaving groups depart with the electron pair that was used to bond them to the substrate. In general, the best leaving groups are weak bases that are happy and stable on their own. The better the leaving group, the faster the reaction. Here we can see a little scale where we can see the pKa of the conjugate acid, where over here they're much more basic than over here. These make really good leaving groups. These groups never leave. That was our presentation on the E1 elimination reaction. I hope you learned a lot, and thank you very much.